Greetings Acolyte, and welcome back to the Ordo Grigio, the Emperor's secret society against the enemy that is unpainted models. Today we rescue an abandoned Vindicator and return it to service for Loyalist Iron Warriors. I started by using a pin vise and some drill bits to add some battle damage to the model. Even Loyalist Iron Warriors are very utilitarian, and I imagine this Vindicator has seen its fair amount of conflict, and unless it's causing functional damage, the Iron Warriors are likely to keep using it to break sieges. I acquired this model years ago as part of a collection dump by someone I knew, and has been sitting in a box ever since, which is why it's a weird shade of blue. Altogether, a vanilla Vindicator is quite plain and being loyalists, it will lack the usual spikes I'm used to with chaos. But we can still scratch off an area of paint on the side to attach a 3D printed Iron Warrior's skull, which I fussed way too long over, whether it was straight and centre or not. Before I begin priming, I add some Citadel Astro Granite to the treads of the tank. However, I forgot to press record, so instead we can see me apply this to a Rhino. I dip an old brush which is already pretty dead into the pot and start slapping it onto the treads, trying to keep the movement of them in my head when adding more or less build up. I wanted them dirty and used, but still wanted to see that there was tread underneath. I also apply this around where the track guards are to simulate mud being flung up against the tank. Tanks are surprisingly quick and make a fair amount of mess going cross country. Once this has dried, it's time for priming, and I wanted to keep the theme fairly dark, so I started with Vallejo Surface Primer Black, thinned slightly with airbrush thinners. It's a polyurethane primer, so it will stick to the model really well, and give a good durable finish, even over other layers of paint. The whole model gets a coat of this, but my airbrush maintenance has been lacking of late, and it begins to clog. A few canticles of faith and a blessing of the Omnisci later and the paint flows once more. I'm making sure I move around the model and whilst I want a good strong coat, I don't want to slap it on and lose too much detail. It does start clogging again so after the black I give it a bit more of a thorough clean. Airbrushes have a fickle machine spirit and require regular blessings. Once this has had a while to dry I mix Vallejo Premium Airbrush Silver with a few drops of the black primer. The airbrush silver is quite bright and I wanted to tone it down a bit for a silver closer to lead belcher than plate mail metal. Again the whole model is coated with this until it has a dark, menacing metallic sheen. I focus more paint on the upper portions of the model to add a very subtle highlight. I made sure to paint the underside of the tank too, focusing on the treads, so that once they're painted there should still be some metallic elements showing. Now we have our silver down, it's time to block in some sections with Xandri dust from Citadel. I'm using this as a base colour to remove the metallics from the areas I want neutral tones, or where I plan to place the chevrons later. The banner and the surrounding panel at the front, and then the plate where the side hatch of the rhino would be. I thinned this fairly heavily, though coverage isn't the top priority here. I also used the biggest brush I had with an actual tip, so I could work around the details on the side hatch leaving the metallics in the recesses, as if the paint had been applied or reapplied after the armour plating had been replaced in the vehicle's history. Next is Army Painter's Leather Brown, watered heavily for all the weathering on the tracks. By watering it heavier it acts almost like a wash, and will flow into the recesses, but not quite as well as a regular wash would, so it will give a more caked on appearance. I'm fairly haphazard with this, and not trying so hard to get it perfect, as let's face it, Mod being flung around will hardly be uniform, I just want to make sure it's not anywhere that doesn't really make sense. Whilst the brown is on my brush, I go around and get the areas of battle damage for the first stage of our rust and corrosion. It's still heavily watered, and in some places I use a stippling motion to add some patchiness and variation to the model, further implying a texture of rusted and corroded steel. Wild Rider Red is used for the next step of the rust and corrosion, again watered down to an almost wash-like consistency. This is applied much in the same way as the leather brown from the previous step, although we were more sparing with this step, 
so the fresh orange rust doesn't cover up all of the brown from earlier. With the paint this thin it can pull, so just use a finger or a cloth to dab away or blot the excess paint around the area, further adding texture to corrosion. Rakarth Flesh makes another appearance on the channel, but a quick layer across the banner on the front of the tank. My initial plan was to later freehand a name onto the tank there, however, as you'll see later, my freehand skills are fairly lacklustre. Retributor Armour comes out to add some brassy details to the vehicle, easily my favourite brassy gold. I pick out the embossed skulls, the driver's viewport, the Imperial Aquila on the side, and ports for the vents and banding across the model. Despite being a loyalist, I still wanted it to feel like a true Iron Warriors vehicle, so I stuck with the traditional scheme of iron, brass, black and yellow. I really slowed the pace of the painting here so I could avoid getting brass onto the silver of the hull, as I probably wouldn't be able to mix the exact shade of silver again, as it was pure guesswork. I also love the detail of the shell winch at the rear, even though it makes no logical sense in the middle of a firefight, but rearming on the go feels very Iron Warrior Siege Engine, so I'm just going to enjoy it and paint it up like a giant brass shell capable of punching holes in the strongholds of enemy encampments. Army Painter's Matt Black is next for the step I've been dreading, Hazard Stripes. No Iron Warrior vehicle is complete without Hazard Stripes, so it's time for me to give it a go. If it comes out bad, it does. I can always add weathering to cover it up. I start by thinning the black and block in an area within the lines to get a feel for how the paint will flow, and then begin sketching my lines for the stripes. I'm trying to keep it as parallel as possible, but as I said earlier, my freehand isn't the best. After some practice on the front, I move on to the plate on the side and paint a line for the boundary first. Then I backfill in the space that will be black and then find it easier to rotate the tank to try and angle it so my brush is moving vertically, as I found this easier in the end. The details on the plate make it a little tricky at times, and part of me is thinking maybe I should have added them on after the stripes. Trying to space the lines evenly as possible, however, it is far from perfect at this stage. This is actually the part of the Iron Warriors paint scheme that stopped me playing them years ago. And while it wasn't as hard as I used to think it was, it is a very tricky part of the process. Once the lines are in, I come back in with the watered down black to fill in between the lines, and it looks a bit like this. I'm still not quite happy with it, but we'll carry on. With the black still out, I add in the iconic black inserts as well, or at least the iconic in my head. Lining them with the largest brush I can get away with and wiping away any mistakes with my finger before it can dry. It's still fairly small detail, but it does really tie the model in with the Iron Warriors in my mind. Demonic Yellow from Army Painter is next for a hashy, stippled highlight on the hazard stripes. This paint has quite patchy coverage anyway, so I'm using that to my advantage to get a worn out yellow look. At this stage it looks a little garish and horrible, however in the weathering later will really mute this colour and bring it down to the same gritty, battle-hardened look as the rest of the vehicle. I repeat this on the side of the vehicle, dabbing with my finger where it feels too strong and adding in some scratchy lines to add different textures. I then use Lead Belcher from Citadel, mixed with a very small amount of matte black, and begin half stippling, half dry brushing, half making it up as I go along. This ages the paintwork on the vehicle, and part of me is thinking this technique might be a decent way to do some grim dark imperial fists, although that's just adding more projects to my list and I have enough already. Weathering like this is a lot about feel rather than hard and fast rules, so I moved between the two areas applying the darkened lead belcher until it ran out on my palette. I then used some pure lead belcher to add a bit more variety to the metallics and give the look of various stages of damage and weathering, and then I moved around the model with the same dry brush stippling gut feeling combo to add more damage and chipping to the model until I was happy with the effect. Agrex Earthshade from Citadel is next for all the areas of rust and corrosion across the model. This is to tone down the orange and add some more depth to these areas. I also apply it to the brass details like the skulls and banding on the demolisher cannon 
just add a bit more warmth to the brassy colour and add some shadows as well. On the larger hazard stripes on the side I stipple it and swoosh it around a little bit to add a bit of extra wear and texture on the large flat panel. And then finally add this into some of the recesses on the model, add a recess wash, add more depth to the metallic colour as it's looking a bit flat at this point. Following on with washes, Nuln Oil is next for more recess shades randomly across the model. Using two different washes does add some variation to the shadows and in some areas I allow it to pool to simulate grease and oil running down the surface of the vehicle. At this stage it does seem quite messy but once the wash dries it will be more subtle and grimy. The rear hatch also needed a little love so I added streaks of null oil running down it and then take a damp brush to streak and stipple the effect a little more, making the smooth surface seem pitted and worn. With all the weathering of the metal done, it looks like this. Not bad. The next step is matte white from Army Painter, which I use on the lights on the front of the vehicle and on the sensor array above the banner. I use a scruffy brush and try to make the white bleed outwards from the light, catching raised areas around it to give a glowing appearance. To complete this, Fire Giant Orange speed paint is applied over the white and onto the metallic areas around the lights to tint these areas orange, though I'm not entirely sold on this effect to be honest. I mix some dark wood speed paint with some gloss varnish in a roughly 5 to 7 ratio, because why would it be an easy number, and apply this across the tracks. This will seep into the recesses like a speed paint, but will retain some of the glossiness when it's dried. Hopefully this will appear as wet mud clinging to the tracks as it drives its way through the marshy bogs. And I also add this to any of the areas in the hull where I think that mud would fly off and cling to. Though I do make sure to leave some of the leather brown showing to keep a border of dried mud around the fresh wet mud. I find it's quite awkward to know when this is dry as it still looks kind of wet when it's finished thanks to the gloss varnish. Demonic yellow comes back out as I'm not quite happy with the orange lights, so I add a small dot of this into the centre of each light source to give an intense centre to the orange light. It seemed a bit weird to me for the reflections to be the same brightness as the light. Though perhaps I should have done white and yellow before the speed paint to add the transition before. But musing aside, the model now looks like this. So there we have it, a Vindicator ready to serve the Emperor alongside their fellow Iron Warriors, laying siege to the enemies of mankind. However, it still does not have a name, and as the second vehicle I've ever painted in my entire life, I think it deserves one. So if you can think of any names that would fit on that tiny little banner after seeing my freehand skills, let me know down in the comments below. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.